The plant here, as we've left our, our stadium area, our seating area, this is called three-leaf sumac. It isn't a poisonous sumac. It, it is a wonderful little sumac that makes a pretty bush with little berries in the fall, and it turns colors in the fall. It turns a beautiful uh, orange, yellow, and red, loses its leaves, but comes back next spring. It does very well in our area. It grows in our mountains. You can make it into a hedge, or you can just let it grow wild like that. It just gives you a pretty look that you normally don't get with our desert plants. It's a broader leaf, has a red leaf. It kind of reminds you some of the plants that you see back east. So I would definitely suggest you look for the, the three-leaf sumac, or it's also called skunk bush or squaw bush, whatever. But I, it's definitely an add-in. They come in low, low growing ground cover, and they also come in upright that can, bushes that can get up to five feet tall and make a hedge. Then we also have over here a really beautiful yucca. This yucca is called yucca faxonia. It is a tree yucca. It's very symmetrical and it is not from our area. It has been used a lot in landscaping. It, is, uh, it does have very sharp spines, so watch out where you put it. Personally, I think Keystone, we might have not done a good idea putting it here when we have our parties because you, know, you have a little too much to drink and you might run into one of these, but just keep that in mind. But it is a very statuesque plant. Now, rem now, unfortunately, these plants have been part of a controversy where they have been stripped off of ranches in Texas and sold in Arizona. So just make sure that where your plant comes from, uh, it just so that we're not ruining the environment, but it is a very stat statuesque accent plant and make sure that you either plant it in ones, threes, or fives. Don't ever plant any landscape plant in, in any kind of a even number because it doesn't look natural. Now we're in our, our lawn area where we have a lot of our events, our wedding events, but on the edges we kept with the low water using elements and the one that you see in front of you is called chaparral sage. This is a great sage. It it's, uh, grows very, very fast, gets those little uh, round groupings of blue flowers. It has a great smell. It just smells so good. You can, it's a very sagey smell. It can go, f and it can take very, very little water. It grows, you can plant a one gallon plant and it'll be that size by the end of the year. It does sometimes grow way too fast. If it gets way too much water, it gets huge and then dies at the end of the year. And that is another tale we need to tell you is that when you water native plants, they will love it and they will take tons of water and they will go very, very big, but it shortens their life cycle. So make sure that when you're setting your irrigation timer or you're watering, make sure that you're not giving them tons of water like we are next to this grass area. Another great ground cover that is used in a lot of our landscapes here is called the Mexican Evening Primrose. It's a pink primrose that grows on the canal banks here along our, our Rio Grande. It loves water and the more you give it the more it'll go but if you restrict its water it behaves and stays in the area it's supposed to stay. It has pink flowers all summer long. It's a real pretty plant. The only thing is it can be eaten up by flea beetles, but it comes right back. And actually, it's such an aggressive plant that if you don't want it to take over your entire garden, you're glad the flea beetles ate it. So, and because it'll bounce right back. But just remember, water it a lot if you want it to take over a big, huge area or keep uh, stingy with the water and it still blooms and it becomes more compact, but it will live, live, live. It's hard to get rid of, but once you get it, it makes a beautiful look to your garden.